Hi, I'm Lisa Johnson, Assistant Professor with the College of Education at Ashford University, and this brief presentation discusses what's next for the HOPE model. Helpful, optimistic, proactive, and expert. This is a model for instructive feedback and feedback generally that Dr. Halfaker and I have been developing. And so I also encourage you to see the overview of HOPE at the end of this video for a reminder of the basics of the model, or view the HOPE channel on my YouTube page to get the rest of the videos. Thank you so much for your attention. We look forward to your feedback. Naturally, in the development of any new model, there is a need to ground that model within existing literature. And there's some question as to whether the HOPE framework should not be a more of a process model, with scaffolded layers involving prescriptive as well as descriptive approaches to take with instruction. Investigating the literature on feedback aligned with the modality of LMS-based online asynchronous learning experiences involving a dedicated facilitator and instructional pre-designs, we've interpreted the HOPE model as fitting within the realm of the elaboration theory in relation to the work of Keller and the ARCS model for motivation. And to Colvavy and Stock, who in the late 1980s as computer-aided instruction became fragmented by this wonderful mainstream today technology, that's arguably changed everything, the Internet and World Wide Web of educational opportunities. Though you'll notice from the information on the slide that Colhavy and Stock suggested three types of feedback elaboration are possible. Task-specific, which is a confirmation of a pass-fail nature to a learner, such as an automated response feedback in a quiz or submission notification, merely a restatement of some fact of accuracy. Instruction-based, which can be designed into the learning activity and something that we are going to try to work into our course development processes and guidance performances in the courses to ensure that we can front load, as it were, for success by giving context and empowering the student to use common feedback that is instructive in a pre-designed, ensured way. The instructional also relates to rubric development because as a form of checklist for learners, the rubric becomes an instructive feedback device inherently by its affordances to relate what is expected for performance in the activity. And finally, the type that we are most concerned with in our day-to-day -day teaching activities, the extra instructional, which is that feedback which we give to learners subsequent to a performance, not before or with administration of the activity. Extra instructional feedback often takes form in the summative grading process, but may be added after any performance, even formative discussion participation throughout the week, leading to final evaluation. Therefore, if we were to imagine a prong off of the extra instructional to the framework HOPE, we can see that the association with an existing conceptual framework for feedback, the process of applying HOPE would mean further situating it in known practice. With that said, we can quickly take a look at other feedback that informs the conceptual model of HOPE. In the scheme of things, again, HOPE fits within the process recommendations for models pertaining to formative and summative feedback as they relate to online interactions that may be or may not be asynchronous in design. Recall, formative feedback is decidedly that which modifies student performance with attention given to learning, while summative feedback is more culminating and that offers a judgment, usually in the form of a grade for an assessment. Whether our feedback is for summative or formative activities is not highly relevant in the HOPE model. There is an assumption that all feedback will be timely, which at AU is governed by minimum standards for response and grading times in course communication, which happens anywhere you make contact with a message of any kind to your learners. We also make the assumption that feedback is controlled by the student. For example, in the gradebook, there is no narrative text to the points grade, yet feedback, often very detailed feedback, can be included with the evaluation and accessed by clicking the grade. The student then, in theory, for all grades, has access to deeper information about his or her performance beyond any task-based feedback, which we explored on the last slide some. Other characteristics of HOPE are that it aligns with the Schwartz and White emphasis. Additionally, that faculty should demonstrate consistency in their types and styles of feedback to student to help train the learners where and how feedback might occur in the course. This is perhaps the area of greatest academic freedom. Will you use video feedback, audio, images, or some sort of badge for reward, perhaps? Let students know you're thinking ahead of time. Adult learners are known to benefit from awareness of process, and we do work with adult learners. All of the other elements are represented in the HOPE model, such as the need for online feedback to be multidimensional, non-evaluative, supportive, 
thorough, ongoing, constructive, supportive, and substantive, while also being specific, objective, and individual. Although vague in overall presentation, this framework from Schwartz and White's works to get us thinking in terms of application in our College of Education courses, and perhaps beyond, of the HOPE model. With that said, we can argue that HOPE is firmly positioned as a substantive extra-instructional feedback model. It can prevent gratuitous praise, which for adults can be demotivating. As Valdowski in 2008 explained, praise may take the form of awkward praise, which is given when an absence of other meaningful comment is available. Mercy praise, which is given when the learner strives but falls short of proficiency in learning experiences. There's snob praise, when clear, informative feedback is wanted, but what is given is superfluous and therefore condescending or annoying. There's jabber praise, which is seen as perfunctory and predictable, interpreted as flattery. There's puppet praise, writing too specific to the instructor or designer audience, values as very manipulative and controlling. And then there's terminator praise, which is conversation endings to move on to another topic. So feedback is not effective unless it's well formulated and with intention, and it can avoid a gratuity about it. So with that in mind, what does this S3P model tell us? There are many models of what form feedback should take, with some being granular in approach, while others take a more macro-level view as a conceptual driver for practice. As it relates to our design process, Voldowski's work on adult motivation is insightful, as it is suggests that for any given designed instructional message, there be a consideration of the feedback or inner subjectivity that is likely to arise from the learning activity. By thinking through the kinds of interactions that will take place, we can design more holistically and account for the benefit that comes from debriefing.